I think it would be a good idea to uh, wait for many others to join us. So please be patient, like uh, perhaps two minutes more. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome, dear students, to our M MSAT preparation writing course. Uh, kindly listen carefully to this online class rules, uh, which is uh, mainly focused on your participation actively, your um, discipline while you're participating in this online class. Listen carefully. This were the online class uh, discipline rules. Uh, I think everybody would be committed with, to it. Today's session will have two parts. Part one, almost 30 minutes. We're going to understand writing skills. And then we're going to move on to the writing practice for part two. First of all, what are writing skills? As you see here, we're supposed to recognize the writing process and the academic writing organization, the layout of writing, whether you're writing a paragraph or an essay, you're supposed to be committed to a, a certain academic layout. We know about that. We're going to understand and employ an effective writing strategy. We're going to understand writing assessment rubric. It's, this is very important for self rating while you're uh, rating or assessing your own writing um, and expect what mark you're going to hit. So it's better to understand the rubric itself. We're going to add item by item. Introduce student to the mindful writing tips. It is very important to manage your um, exam time and the techniques for writing effectively. Identify the most common grammar mistakes. This would be the part one, which is writing skills, understanding writing skills. OK, as you see here, what are literacy skills? Literacy includes reading and writing. We already had a session on reading, but for today, I'm going to focus more mainly on writing. Organization, like PAGA prompt format, relevance, find related ideas, which are supposed to be related to each other so that you'll have kind of consistency and coherence. 
Consistency means connect ideas by using transitions like uh, transitional words or phrases. Make a connection. You connect the topic of the writing with the, another, um, something you read about or text to text or your own experience and all the words. We use this technique as well in the reading itself. So it would be uh, very effective as well to use it for um, writing. Use academic vocabulary. This is very important. It's a must use to write using academic vocabulary. So slang language or languages informal should not be used while you're writing academically and you're writing exam for MSAT or IELTS or whatever. You're supposed to stick to using the academic vocabulary. For example, the word um, like, if you get an example, you don't, you don't have to say like and give exam, no. It's better to say, in, for instance, or for example, much better than, or such as, much better than using uh, like. Well, uh, proofreading is a great um, closure tool to make sure that you have already revised your writing uh, against uh, punctuation and spelling mistakes. Well, what are writing genres? Types of written uh, texts. There are um, fiction, non-fiction uh, writing. For fiction, it's mainly narrative writing. When you write a story or a novel, this is called fiction. And, you know, expository is writing for information or reporting something. This is called expository. What is expository uh, writing? The text, the text is written to present information. It uses one of the several recognized text structures like including uh, description, compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem, solution, opinion, and so on. Expository writing could um, come under uh, different categories. For example, we have descriptive or definition writing. Example is encyclopedias. Process or sequential writing, like a recipe. When you have a recipe, how to cook something, how to do um, a special dish. So you get to go through some steps first, second, then after that. And finally, this is called process or sequential writing. Comparative and contrast. To compare and contrast between two aspects or two items. This is uh, this kind of ex exposition is used to demonstrate how two or more subjects are the same or different. So we compare similarities and contrast differences. For example, like when you write an article that explains the difference between owning and renting a home, which is different, or raising a, a pet at home, which pet should be uh, better than the other, a dog or a cat. So we're gonna compare and contrast between both, okay? This is called compare, comparative and contrast writing. There's cause and effect writing, and this kind of essay describes how well, how one step leads to another, leads to a result or a consequence. For example, a personal log, chronicling uh, like what's called the workout regime or regime. You say a personal blog here, you have a cause and effect, or say something like causes something else. For example, global warming is a, um, let's say, an effect of something, some other reasons. So you need to uh, brainstorm for the reasons for global warming. Global warming is a result. This is effect. What are the causes? You need to brainstorm or search for it. If you write about global warming from the aspect of cause and effect, you have to cover the two sides. What are the causes and what are the consequences? And perhaps you should, you should like suggest solutions for this. Well, a problem and solution. Yeah, you can take it from this aspect, uh, problem and solution. This type of essay presents a problem and possible solutions. And finally, there is like classification essay, which breaks down a broad topic into categories or grouping. Well, what about the writing process? When you write, you're supposed to run through different stages. First of all, plan for writing, which is called pre-writing. When you plan for writing, you're supposed to set the ideas, what you're going to write about, what are the points you're supposed to cover uh, while you're writing. This is called planning for writing. When also you plan for writing, you're supposed to find out the academic vocabulary, which is related to the topic you're going to write about. 
You need to find the vocabulary, the right vocabulary, and also write, find the ideas you're gonna focus your writing on. This is planning. Also, you need to mind the plan outline. Consider the plan outline. You need to put the, um, the points you're gonna write about in kind of a plan. First, um, paragraph one, which is supposed to be introduction to your writing, then paragraph two, first idea, paragraph three, second art idea, paragraph uh, four, your opinion or your argument, you know, you need to support, support your opinion with some evidence, fa some facts, some statistics or whatever. Then write the first draft. You don't care about any grammar mistake. You don't have to care about any grammatical mistake or any spelling mistake during when you write the first draft. But when you revise it, this is called the second draft or redraft your writing. Here, this is a pre-submission stage when you have to revise your mistakes, whether related to grammar, related to spelling, punctuation, or even ideas. Sometimes you write, wrote some ideas which are supposed to be um, discarded or omitted because they are irrelevant ideas. So you need to keep your writings focused at, uh, as maximum as possible. Make it focused, okay? And finally, you should be supposed to edit, you know, wrap up your writing and proofread it for the optimal uh, version and submit. Good. So what are the steps for writing a paragraph? Who can tell me about the steps when you just start writing a paragraph? What are these first steps you should follow? The layout of writing a paragraph. Yes, I, want, I would like to hear from you. Would like to tell us what are the steps you should write or follow when you write a paragraph. Let me um, be more, fo more focused. I'm going to say, what are the elements of a paragraph, academic paragraph? Yes, uh, Mohra, go ahead. Uh, maybe first uh, the information about the topic. Mm -hmm. You need to uh, find information related to the topic. That's good. But I'm talking about the elements. What is the first thing you should write in a paragraph then? Like, for example, you need to write a topic sentence, okay? Theme of the topic itself, the points you're going to write about. This is called topic sentence, theme, statement, okay? After that, you follow up with details or supporting details, okay? Given examples, given explanation, given maybe your opinion, you support your opinion. These are called details. Finally, you close or you conclude your writing with a conclusion. These are called elements of writing, okay? Let's revise it here. A writing um, of a paragraph should follow this pattern. First, you need to find out an interesting topic sentence with a hook part, you know, uh, attention grabbing uh, statement, which could attract the attention of readers. Uh, I mean, the reader should be your marker. Study main idea. What is a general statement which include the, the points I'm going to write about? This is the first part of the paragraph. Then you're going to support with details and examples. While you're writing your supporting, uh, supporting um, uh, sentences here, you should explain your points you're going to talk about, introduce evidence and, you know, use facts, examples, experiments, studies, arguments, codes. Sometimes you add a code, this will make your writing very strong, actually. If you um, uh, find a code, somebody says so, you say according to uh, Ahmed Zweil, according to Einstein, according to President, um, let's say, um, Biden or Obama, according to uh, Sheikh Zayed, you can quote something and put in between brackets. This will make your writing very, um, like, uh, very uh, strong. Well, this will support your evidence and give some comments. Explain what the evidence means. Explain the evidence you, um, you added to your writing. What makes this evidence related to the topic? You know, make kind of connection. And finally, you conclude by wrapping up the first main idea. You can, in the conclusion part, support could be like a summary of the main points you raised in this writing, or 
re you restate your opinion, but don't add any new idea in the conclusion part. No, never support, uh, I mean, add any new idea which you have not discussed in the body of the, um, I mean, in the body of your essay. Don't add any uh, new idea. The conclusion is supposed to be a summary of elements. Uh, you may um, uh, use, let's say, uh, end with a question to make it like open-ended uh, writing. You just ask the reader or the audience whether um, there could be a different solution, a different opinion, or whether they accepted your argument or not. You may end with a, an open-ended question for your audience. So always consider your audience. This will make your writing interesting to the reader. I mean, your first write marker or second marker. Good. Um, so, yes. Uh, can we start the topic with the question and in the end we answer the question? This will be good. OK, let me explain this point. Thank you for your question, uh, Fatima. Yeah, you can start the topic sentence introductory uh, part of your writing. If you write in a paragraph, for example, start with a hook. A hook could be a grabbing, attention grabbing question. Yes, you can start with a question actually, and you're trying to answer this question. Okay, answering your question will be during the body of your writing. You know, the main points we're going to raise here would be answering, trying to answer or find a solution to this question, or you just um, give your opinion. It could be accepted or not. Some other, you need to respect other opinion. You say, this is not the, uh, let's say, absolute, absolutely accepted opinion. There are, I accept other different opinions. OK, so all that you need to do, just raise a question to um, like attention grabbing question to get your audience attracted or grabbed your write, writing and try to explain the this question in different points. Try to give evidence, give details, give facts, give the statistics, which would support your writing. Finally, in the end or the final part, it's closure or what's called conclusion. Don't raise any new ideas here. You're supposed to have already discussed everything about the topic. OK, hope this answered your question, Fatima. Yes, you can answer. You can start with a hooking uh -huh. of attention grabbing question. Discuss the question or possible um, uh, points or ideas related to the question. Maybe you can find an, an idea for this. Support with evidence, that's statistics or facts. Sometimes you quote somebody's saying, uh, somebody of authority like Sheikh Zayed, like um, um, uh, like a, a king or a president or whatever, whoever, or even a scholar or scientist, quote, and put it between practice. This will make your writing very strong. OK, of course, you don't have to quote uh, a friend's saying. Don't say my friend, my best friend said so. That, and this is what I believe. No, find somebody who is like uh, you know, reliable or trustworthy, trustworthy like a scientist. What research tells you about this point? OK, well, let's move on. Paragraph writes, writing should follow this pattern, which is called P-E-E-L, point, evidence, explain and link. If you follow this pattern, uh, pattern while writing your paragraph, I think you will cover all it. You remember when we uh, talked about Writing in response to reading, there is comprehension question. You should re, um, follow this race, R, A, C, E pattern when you re respond to this question. This It's similar here. Raise R for restate the question, but here you don't have a question, you have a prompt. You know, A for answer, uh, um, C for cite evidence, and E for explanation. It's almost the same here. Point, make the central argument express the main idea in topic sentence. This is a topic sentence, explain, uh, refer to the main idea here. Then, supporting statement should have evidence, explain, and link. Provide evidence, this is what you see here. A reason supporting your point, maybe in, your, in the form of a quote. You can find a quote, as I said, from an authority, like Sheikh Zaid, for example, like uh, President, um, whoever, um, yeah, American prison, or maybe um, a British prison, or any prison who has authority, or somebody as color. A historical figure could be, explain the point and how the evidence provided supports it. What's the connection between, I mean, the, um, the relevance between the evidence and, you know, the point you raise, the topic, and bridge to the next paragraph. 
Of course, if you have to show some coherence, consistency and coherence between the different different paragraphs of your essay, you should link the first paragraph, the second paragraph, the third paragraph and the final paragraph using some phrases like use transitional phrases and refer to your main idea. Every now and then you refer to the main idea and you say that I think this is this support the topic, um, a topic. Uh, which is raised in uh, at the first beginning, at the very beginning or the first paragraph. So make links. If you follow this pattern, remember peel paragraph pattern, it would be OK. What is a, a pattern? And each paragraph should follow this pattern, like each paragraph. Topic sentence, the main idea of this paragraph, then uh, evidence, explanation and connection to the next or the following paragraph or even connection to the main topic or main idea. I hope you will uh, apply this pattern. We're going to have practice, inshallah, in the second part of this session. We'll see how we can apply this. Um, there's another type of uh, essay writing, which is called compare and contrast. As you see, compare means similarities between two things. If I say, what do you think, which is better, face-to-face -face, uh, learning or online learning? Both. Um, Thank God this generation experienced both mode of learning, both mode of learning. You were like um, you were um, uh, learning by face to face, but now because of the pandemic, we had to move on or shift to digital learning, which is like online. So if we write about the advantage and disadvantage between uh, comparing and contrast between both modes. So here you should follow two different pat patterns could be applied a block pattern or point by point. For example, let's take point by point. You find some points which um, could relate to face-to-face uh, -face learning and online learning, or let's say digital or blended or um, remote learning. So for example, uh, you, get, you get point one, uh, let's say effective learning. Point two, mental, moral education, point or physical, moral and physical education or uh, benefit. Point three, the uh, the tools used, instructional uh, media and tools. So here, for example, tools and instructional media, um, you compare between face to face and online under one under one point. Okay, you're gonna talk for this paragraph about instructional tools or media or things or platform platforms used. What are the tools the teacher uses or the student uses for? Uh, learning while they are in class, face to face, physical learning. And also what are the tools the um, online learning or let's say uh, distance learning are used? Supposed to be totally different. We use uh, online learning, for example, we use Teams. We don't have to use Teams, um, Microsoft Teams while in class. Perhaps we don't have to. Um, we use smart board in class, but we don't use it. We use virtual classes online, so we put the two, the two different uh, aspects, which is face to face and online under one idea, which is instructional tools. This is point by point. Get a point and talk about online and face uh, face to face instruction under the same point. This is called point by point. What about block? OK, here is an example. Two cousins are very different. So you have face to face. We have this topic face to face and online. You talk about face to face in the first paragraph and cover all the points you have related to face to face. Then you move on to the other um, side, which is online or distance learning, and you cover all the points related, the same points, but related to face to face. This is called block writing. If you compare and contrast between two things, um, you know, you have a lot of examples. You can practice a lot about writing using block or uh, point by point pattern. Well, what are the transition words? This is very important, actually. While you're writing, you must use transitional words to keep coherence. All the paragraphs, when you move from a paragraph, let's say introduction paragraph, which has a main idea and the theme, okay, you should link the main introductory paragraph to the first paragraph, the first point you're talking about, using these uh, words or phrases. To indicate a time relationship, you say afterwards, after that, beginning with, beyond, during, eventually, finally. This tells the, the reader or the market that you move on from uh, through time. This is not the first. If you say finally, that means the last idea. 
If you say beginning with, that means this is the first idea. I will understand this. What about to indicate spatial placement? Under, below, beyond, next, and so on. So we move from a part to another. This is spatial or location. To list or present a series of ideas, you start with, first of all, second, then, similarly, moreover, in addition, so sorry, yeah, second, third, finally, you get uh, as a list of things, okay? To add information, use likewise, but don't use likewise, actually, don't like this word, actually. You must better use furthermore, similarly, in addition. Don't use also, this is not academic. I don't like this word to use in writing. You can say another point is besides, similarly, moreover, in addition, and so on. These are different transitional phrases and words you must use to show what, what's important of uh, transition words and phrases. Who can tell me why we should or must use transition words? Who can tell? Raise your hand, please. Why we should use transition words or phrases like this while we are moving from a paragraph to another or from uh, a point to another in your writing? Um, only Fatima. Yes, Fatima. Uh, the paragraph become so strong with this word. Mm -hmm. You mean to make it uh, robust or strong? But actually, this is mainly yeah. for coherence, to keep coherence. You see, linking together like here. You see this um, uh, tool, gadget? We use it to link things together, like link paper. The same when you write a paragraph. Using these words means you are move from a point to another or from a paragraph to another. Yes, Aisha? Um, because the, the one who is reading like my paragraph uh, do not get bored and be interesting for what uh, I wrote. And also uh, will not get lost. <laughs> yes, you, you proceed, uh, you know, coherently or fluent, um, let's say, smoothly from one part to another and using a point here, a linking word, which may take the reader or the audience from a point to another point and use another linking word, which moves the reader from uh, this point to the another or a further point, okay? This will not get your reader uh, or audience lost. Thank you for uh, uh, your answer. So that means to keep or maintain coherence of your writing. Um, should I memorize this? Yes, you should memorize it. Use it. It's, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it's not a problem if you use uh, transition words, but don't memorize a statement. Scripted words or phrases are not advised in your writing. Scripted means some students memorize an introductory part. And whenever you write, you use it. So when I mark this right and find a lot of students write the same thing. Now, please be creative. Don't memorize statements and put in your writing just to count words. Let me say this now. I think you understand what I say, right? Some people say, undoubtedly, all the world knows about the problem of global warming and this uh, puts a crucial um, you know, a demand on the world getting access to solutions or suggesting solutions and get to uh, do some effective, um, you know, um, action plan to support and save a uh, planet. So if you memorize this statement and, and many people, many students memorize the same, memorize the same, it could be kind of cheating, repeating the same thing or sharing the same uh, statement. Okay, so please don't memorize and try to be creative while you're writing. Use words from your own creation, perhaps, you know, from all your readings, but don't memorize things. Okay, paragraph unity or sentence connectors. If you want to use sentence connectors, it would be like this. To have logical order, you use words like this. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, next, last, finally, in addition. So many of you make a mistake using the word finally, for example, this is an adverb. We use it to put uh, like um, a logical order, sequence of the points. So you start with firstly, or first of all, secondly, thirdly. And when you get to the final point, you say finally, okay? Or last, finally or last. But when you finish uh, different paragraphs, you come to the final paragraph, which is conclusion, don't say finally. 
here use in the end to sum up in conclusion in a word okay don't use finally at the beginning of the concluding or closure paragraph okay good uh, for comparison you say similarly likewise don't use likewise so similarly are um, important and so on too in addition and so on comparison you can use all of this. What about contrast? You say, but, yet, more than, differently, uh, although, while, even though, and so on. Well, I think we um, have to proceed with this. Um, write in a juicy paragraph like, it's burger outline. This is very important. Put this in mind when you write. To plan your writing, start with the introductory part. The uh, first part should be introduce your topic, what you're going to write about. Use an interesting way like a hook. Hook your audience in, um, in the topic. Try to get your audience attracted to the topic. Use interesting words or impressive words. You can use, like uh, Fatima said, so just yeah, you can use a question and try to answer it. Okay? A hook could be like a joke. Yeah, you can start a joke. Why not? But don't use a um, rude joke. <laughs> it should be funny. A joke, a uh, humor, you can use facts. Have you, uh, do you know, have you known that um, um, Egyptians were the first first people to, uh, let's say, travel to space? Oh, really? I haven't known that. Egyptians were the first people to, to run to, or let's say, to travel to space? Uh, I have not, I don't believe that. So he tried to give like a hooking statement or say, did you know that the Emirates started space, um, uh, space era? They joined the space nations? Oh, I haven't heard about that. Yeah, this is fact. This is how you attract your audience by saying something maybe new for them. You know, many people don't know that uh, the United Arab Emirates joined the space nations. Maybe um, the United Arab Emirates were the first Arab nation to join the space. You know, it launched a spaceship to the uh, Mars. You know about this, right? So this would be attractive or hooking word. Or rhetorical question. You can use a question, you know, to attract your, your audience. Then you have, after the, the uh, hooking part, you need to set the main points. What are you going to talk about? Point A, point B, and point C. This will be covered in my writing. Paragraph one would be point A. Paragraph two, point three, uh, two. But, uh, you know, one after the introduction. What about one here, information points? Three main points and facts. Information, person, stories, or to explain your point. I mean, connect yourself. Well, finally, the conclusion. Round off your speech with no new information. Don't say anything new you have not discussed in your body. And in, in, in this part here, the evidence and details. Don't ever use any new information. Okay? Sum up your speech, sum up what, the points, and make it memorable. Memorable, you can connect or end with um, a question. To make it like open and to call your audience to think about that. Great. I hope this is clear. This is an example. I need somebody to read this paragraph carefully. Who can read it carefully, please? Hello? Need a good reader? If you don't say raise your hand, I'm gonna pick up somebody. Saud Said. Hello, Saud. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, Saud. Can you kindly read this paragraph? And let's say if we can find the topic. Conclusion. Saeed. Uh, sorry, Saud. Hello, Saud. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, Saad. Yeah, welcome. Sorry, yeah, a lot of names. You know, I used to, to uh, teach in Saudi Arabia, and this name is very common there. Okay, Saad, go ahead. Read this, please. The most important problem in our city is, uh, is it inadequate a public transportation system? Thousands of residents rely on the city's buses and street cars to travel throughout this large city. But metro, uh, but metro transportation system daily schedules are to uh, totally unreliable. A bus right. or uh, yes. a bus or street car that uh, should arrive at seven forty-five. 
45 may not arrive until 8 or late. Moreover, it is not unusual for a bus driver to pass up groups of people waiting for the bus because he wants to make up for the for lost time. Unfortunately, uh, people uh, often end up going work late or missing important appointments in order for people to get their uh, destinations of time. People must allow wait for waiting time at the bus and street cars. Stop. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Suhat. That's perfect. Here we can spot the topic sentence and let's decide if this is hooking uh, or let's say um, attract attention grabbing uh, part or not and the details and finally conclude wrapping the same point in the as in the main uh, or introductory part here the topic sentence let's say the most important problem in the city in our city is it's an adequate public transportation system inadequate is um, ambiguous or bizarre word it's not accurate here or specific in what in what part or what aspect is it inadequate here you will find a discussion why the rights are think that public transportation is not reliable or inadequate. Let me ask you, do you think this is a, a hook, um, an attention grabbing statement? In, an, in other words, do you think this is an attractive way to start a paragraph? The most important problem in our city is its inadequate public transportation system. Do you think this is hooking the audience? Is there any attractive words in the uh, topic sentence here? We know this is about public transportation and problems. Okay, being what being inadequate or uh, unre unreliable. But what are the words which attract the reader? Maybe no, there's no word which attract the reader. This is like uh, not attractive. But anyway, you go for details. Then the writer talks about, um, you know, thousand residents rely on the city's buses and street uh, cars to travel throughout this, uh, this large city, but metro transportation. So we have metro as an example, you know, using bus, buses, street cars and metro. These are the examples used in this, in the, uh, um, you know, explanation. Talking about daily schedules, which are unreliable because sometimes you miss your car, you miss a bus. That's just because the bus is late or even um, you just you, you couldn't catch it. You know, you couldn't catch it. Well, and here, unfortunately, people often end up going to work late. A problem causing this problem to people. Good reasoning. Finally, in order for people to get to their destination on time, so we are re, um, restating the first part here, which is being inadequate. How to solve this? People must give a solution, must allow for waiting time. OK, here is concluding sentence and the, the middle is supporting tail. Just an example. Well, we are supposed to, um, let's say here, they have um, something to show. Yeah, just a minute, please. If you want to practice more, I think it's better that you take this link. Here we go. Yeah, what are the parts of... Uh, I'm not sure if you can access this, uh, the chat or not, but anyway, I'm going to share it. Can you access this link? No, we cannot. We cannot. OK, um, I'm going to show you this uh, place here. Maybe, um, yes, this is Pega Friday. So it's called home. Let's get to home. Oh, yeah, I can't find a home here. But anyway, this is called D write it down here d uh, l s w web d l s web dot r m i i'm not sure how to copy it for you anyway let me show you here is steps for paragraph writing we talked about that you start with topic sentence like for example smoking and health threats outline your writing you're going to talk about the problem health problem related to smoking 
and health hazards like lung cancer, like other lung diseases, like heart diseases and passive smoking. You know, we don't smoke, but you sit or um, sit with people or get in touch with people who smoke. Well, who smoke? Right topic sentence like there are several serious problem, health problem hazards directly linked to smoking. What points are supposed to talk about? Several health problems or hazards. This will be the different problems I'm going to talk about. Example, then a concluding sentence, then write a concluding sentence to sum up. Clearly, smoking is a dangerous habit and should be avoided. Very similar to the topic sentence. Healthy topic sentence is there are several serious health hazards related to smoking. The same way you reward it. Your reward means write it in a different word. And this is an example. Um, I'm not sure if I share this, but anyway, I think you understand this concept. OK. Uh, one uh, important thing to uh, to ace or hit the high mark in your writing is understanding the rubric, writing rubric. OK, this is the rubric for level A, level eight. If you want to ace the full mark in each part, so you're going to be um, assessed for task completion. You cover all the points you're supposed to write about. Sometimes they ask you uh, to cover all the points here, point one, two, three, and four. You need to talk about all the points. Or you, if you're not asked to write um, about certain points, you will create your own topic. So you are free to cover it. Okay, but you have to stay focused on the main topic. Organization, write each response clearly into structured text with paragraphs having a clear topic, sentence, and relevant support details. If you do this, topic sense for each paragraph and details, evidence, explanation, examples, you will get three out of three in this part. Use of vocabulary. Always use academic relevant vocabulary to construct a detailed response to each prompt. Okay? And don't use, uh, don't repeat the same word every now and then. This is a big mistake people, some students do. You repeat the same word. For example, in addition, in addition, and addition. there should be other word, uh, transition words like in addition. You can say likewise, you can say besides, you can say similarly. Uh, this means in addition, okay? Likewise, and so on. Or moreover, um, range of language structure. Some students follow this mistake writing only simple sentences. You should include simple, compound, and complex sentences. How to create a simple, compound, and com complex sentence? If you use a variety of structures, you will ace the full mark in this part. You know, like what? You can use um, as long as, because, after, uh, before, but, and, um, you know, yet. Use uh, this for compound. Complex, you can use, uh, I mean, compound and complex. So, more complex. Um, uh, support networks you can use, for example, after that, while, you know, and such linking words which, you know, signal the complex uh, sentence. So please use a variety of structures. Use simple, compound, and complex sentences, okay? And you should not use elongated or extended sentences. Some people or some students start a sentence and say and, and, but, Therefore, after that and so on. And the last thing, which is a full stop, comes after three or four lines. No, don't use very much or very long or wordy statement. Please cut your long sentence to short sentences. This would be much better to stay focused and avoid any grammatical mistakes. Uh, I'm just telling you um, my experience about when I market or graded students' um, answers. Uh, accuracy of grammar. Always check your grammar before you submit. OK, but you don't have to care about grammar or spelling when you write the first draft. So you need to divide your time, um, writing time, I mean. First, write the ideas, relevant ideas. Use, uh, you know, write uh, statements, use evidence, use explanation parts. And then before you submit, do what's called like proofreading. Double checking for grammar, spelling or whatever, or even a relevant idea. You may drop or remove an idea because this is not related to the topic. Good. Punctuation and spelling. If you do it like this, you will ace the um, uh, the writing. I'm gonna show you some here, something very important. While I uh, graded my students' uh, writing, this is very important. Before we move on to the practice part, here we go. 
I will put the writing here, my student writing here in front of me. For example, I put it here. I will see his writing. First of all, I will check the plagiarism. I'm going to take this writing here. I put student writing in this website for checking plagiarism detec de detector. OK, maybe plagiarism um, detector or Qtex, any, uh, you know, any tool which will check plagiarism. This first thing I do. If it's plagiarism free, I will try to evaluate it again as the rubric. Here we go. You will get three out of three in this task completion part if you write each response in full meaningful sentences and you have written paragraph with clear topic sentence and river. If you do this, you will get three. OK. Well, what about organization? The student wrote uh, like uh, response in complete simple paragraph or paragraphs. You wrote in a paragraph. Some students only write one block. One block in an essay writing, that means one paragraph. OK, or some people write points. If you write some student write points, that means it's not paragraph or essay writing. You should show the uh, structure should be like organization, paragraph, um, um, you know, paragraph writing, many paragraphs. OK, what about vocabulary? You will get three marks if you get use a range of lexis specific to the topic with sufficient vocabulary and uh, vocabulary and detailed responses. You use academic and relevant vocabulary. OK, what about use of language structure? Of course, you will get three points if you use, let's say uh, here, use a right of symbol, compound and or complex clause in the response. Don't stick too simple. What about accuracy? You will get three points if you use accurate grammatical structures without any errors or minimum errors. You will get here also um, the full mark in punctuation. Your response is free from any run-ons and comma splices with well appropriately clear spacing. You use spacing between you know different um, you know uh, parts. What about spelling? Of course, you need to check spelling and so on. You will get full mark, full mark for this part if this script is spelling error free. Handwriting does not apply here because you're going to uh, type. If you ace this three, 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 and that means you will get the full mark and ace the exam. OK, this is how I grade my students writing. Well, let's move on to the second part here. It's very important to before you submit to check if you fulfilled or accomplished all the uh, points in this uh, rubric. You say before you submit, you need to check this. I introduce with attention grabbing statement. Give your yourself three out of three. Topic sentence and thesis statement are clear, def, clear defined. Give yourself three and so on. OK. Now the last part here is the tips before you write, and then the common mistakes. This is very important to know about the common mistakes. Sorry for being, um, you know, uh, um, I mean, extended this time, but it's very important before we go to the practice part. Applementary practice of writing. This this is very important, I think. Uh, I need somebody to read the mindful tips. I need a good reader. I think all of you are good readers. Who can read the tips? What is supposed to do in on the test while you're writing? Be a mindful writer. Like what? Who can read? Yes. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna read it. Make it like uh, um, short. I, I will come to the bottom line here. Here is a checklist you need to take care of. As you write, organize your writing. You should have a hook. This is statement and points of interest. Each paragraph should have this. Plan before writing. Organize your ideas. Use organizer, uh, graphic organizer, perhaps. Brainstorm for ideas. Don't be too wordy. This is a big mistake a lot of students do. Too wordy. Use unnecessary details. Using uh, a word repeat repetitively or repeated and many times repeated times. Stay focused. For example, if you are writing about advantage of a TV, you may identify two or three major benefits to discuss. Of course, you cannot cover all the points related to TV. So all that to stay focused is all that to do is find two major points to talk about. Always provide details and examples. Use transitions. Keep your writing focused. Uh, uh, read it backward to spot spelling mistakes. Backward means from bottom up, bottom to top. 
This will help you spot any spelling mistakes. Double check contractions and apostrophes. Of course, sometimes you have this word. It's raining. This would be a spelling apostrophe um, a mistake. It's it's not. And the other one, it's um, tail. I mean the cat's tail. The other one possessive, but the first one is um, a contraction. Supposed to be it's apostrophe means it is. This short form for it is. Okay. Always you need to find this. Um, avoid sprawling structure. What are sprawling structure? Unnecessary long sentences. This is what I refer to. Don't use any unnecessary elongated or extended sentence. If you have to, split it up. Chop, use chops, sentence chops. Split in two short sentences where possible. Find an external profit. Of course, in the exam, you cannot find somebody to profit for you. Okay, very important. Allah, please, attention. Plagiarism. Plagiarism. A lot of students, especially in Arab countries, are not familiar with plagiarism policy. Uh, take uh, take care, please, and make sure that you are well informed about plagiarism. If you uh, copy and paste anything from the internet without using, um, you know, citation or referring to this source, you might be penalized. You may lose a lot of marks, or if it's 100% plagiarized, it will be like zero, um, uh, zero score. Okay, so your writing should be unique, creative. It's okay to bring some ideas from other, but you must refer to this. Okay, plagiarism is to, um, but you may re paraphrase, rephrase the ideas on your own words. Use quotation marks if, for example, somebody says so, this quotation, and refer to the person. What are the writing mistakes? I need somebody to read the first sentence, please. Um, let's say, um, Mohsen. Hello, Mohsen. Assalamu alaikum. Mohsen Ahmed. Are you there, Mohsen? Well, uh, Aliaza. Aliaza Ibrahim. Yes. Would you please read the first sentence, which is incorrect, as you say. Read it, please. The two best things about the party was uh, the food and the music. What's wrong here? Mm. Was. Yep, that's it. Well done. Was is wrong because why this, was this verb is wrong? Why? You supposed to be because were. Why? Where, huh? where is the uh, the better word or the correct word? Why were is correct. This is plural verb, right? Yes. Do we have a plural subject? More than one? Yes. The two best things. We have the plural is more than one, two. That means we cannot say uh, the two uh, best things was. We say were. This is one mistake. Okay, verb agreement. Uh, thank you, Eliaza. What about, uh, let's say, Abdullah Yusuf? Hello, Abdullah. Abdullah Yusuf. Are you there? Who else is there? Let me see. Ahmed Jamal. Ahmed. Ahmed. Hello. Manal. Manal Khalifa. Okay, who would like to read this? Uh, this is very important, actually. S sentence fragments. Who would like to read that, please? Omar Muhammad. Al uh, Omar Muhammad. Are you there, Omar? Would you please write? Uh, sorry, read. Omar. Okay, I'm going to read it. Listen carefully. Incorrect to say the boys snuck home late that night. Full stop. That means I finished it. That's okay. Then waited for the consequences. You see, if you uh, end with the full stop, that means we start another sentence. Then waited for consequences. Now, you should not uh, use fragment. Who waited for consequences? You mean, you mean uh, boys. In such case, you use a comma afterwards, not a full stop. A comma means boys wait, snuck, and boys waited. And you don't have to repeat the subject. Use comma. This is called fragment. Missing comma. And this make like what? In case you haven't noticed my real name doesn't appear in the article. In case you haven't noticed my, you haven't noticed my real name. If you read it this way, 
where's the end of the sentence? Okay, actually, you're supposed to use a comma here in case you haven't noticed. My real name doesn't appear in the article. You need to say this. Read as you say it and so on. Uh, apostrophe. I don't believe it's finally Friday. It's finally, it is finally. So we use apostrophe. Um, okay, no comma in a compound sentence. Like what? The man, the man jumped into a, bl a black sedan and he drove away before being noticed. Before and before compound uh, conjunction, use comma. Okay, and he drove. She uh, used the wrong word. Like what? She accepted his offer to drive home, uh, drive her home. I think uh, the writer wants to say she accepted. Another incorrect example is it was a, a breath of fresh air. Now, a breath, breath is verb, so we say it was a breath. Uh, worthy or being worthy, unnecessarily. Jason was planning to attend his friends and so on. Uh, friends wedding on June 30th, but at the last minute he found out he had jury duty, so he couldn't attend the wedding. And many other examples. Rhinon, what's what do you mean, Rhinon? She tried to sneak out of the house. Her mother saw her leaving. Oh, this is a common mistake, actually. You see, um, she tried to sneak out of the house. Her mother saw her. There's no conjunction here. You must use comma, but her mother saw her. Okay, and so on. Comma splice when you use a comma without a conjunction. However, this is however is uh, preceded by a semicolon and followed by a colon. Or here, um, my sister and I love to go shopping. We then have lunch and we then, or just split it, make it two sentences, full stop. Uh, verb shifting. If you have like a past simple, use past simple all through. Joe watched the movie and laughs out loud. Don't say John watch it and laughs. This is past and this is present. So you have to make it all pass or all present. And so on, OK? Now let's practice writing. I will refer you to this, please. Let's get practice. This part would be for practice. 